Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Archie Kale. I am the current, for the next few minutes, chairman of the Regional Operating Council of Mothers Against Drunk Driving Hawaii. Uh, I will uh, basically uh, call this meeting to order, and then I will ask Carol McNamee to uh, introduce our speaker for the evening. And uh, then we'll hand it over to Jennifer Dotson, our executive director, who will uh, tell us some of the highlights of our year. And uh, we'll go right into some the fun part of the evening, certificates of recognition, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end of the evening, I will hand over the gavel to my predecessor, or my predecessor, my successor. So what I'm going to do now is call the meeting to order. This is welcome to the annual meeting of Mothers Against Drunk Driving Hawaii. And uh, there being no further business to discuss, <laughs> uh, I would like Carol McNamee, our founder, to come up and tell us about our speaker. Well, um, I do want to welcome you all here. This is a, a wonderful turnout. And it's our 27th annual celebration, which is pretty amazing. And um, tonight we are very privileged, and I'm sure that's why some of you are here who might not be here otherwise. And that is because um, I am going to be able to introduce Mark Rechtenwald, the new Chief Justice of the Hawaii Supreme Court. And Matt Hawaii has only had the honor of having a Chief Justice speak on one other occasion, and that was um, Chief Justice Ronald Moon, when he attended a press conference we had to kick off a program of, um, called Victim Impact Panels, where victims speak to offenders um, during their um, little program they have to uh, attend in the court. And that was in 1993. But of course, we in the MAD organization are keenly interested in what is happening in the judicial branch of our government, since it affects both offenders and victims alike. And it's important for us to understand what our judiciary is facing in these difficult economic times. Mark Rechtenwald was sworn in as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court in September 2010. Before then, he served as, a, as an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court from May 2009. Um, and before that, as Chief Judge of the Intermediate Court of Appeals. Uh, and he was in that position for two years. Before becoming a judge, he was the director of the Hawaii Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs. So he's kind of seen things from different perspectives. And he did that from, or he was in that position from 2003 to 2007. He was also an assistant U.S. attorney, a part, partner in the law firm of Marr, Jones, and Wang, and an associate at Goodsill, Anderson, Quinn, and Stifle. In addition, he served as a law clerk to the late Chief United States District Judge Harold Fong. He received his JD from the University of Chicago Law School and his AB from Harvard University, and I know that Arky is very happy about that. <laughs> and tonight, the Chief Justice's topic is Justice in Jeopardy. Good evening, aloha everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank MAD Hawaii for inviting me to speak here tonight. I'd like to thank Anita DeMauro, the events chair, Arky Kale, the council chair, and Carol McNamee, the founder of MAD Hawaii, for uh, organizing uh, tonight's event and inviting me to come. Uh, as uh, Carol said, I'd like to share with you some thoughts tonight about the current state of the judiciary. Uh, specifically, I'm gonna talk about the expanded role of the judiciary, uh, some of the challenges facing the courts here in Hawaii, and some of the opportunities that I see in the years ahead, particularly in addressing the issue of impaired driving. Our core mission at the judiciary is to administer justice. We do this primarily by adjudicating cases and doing so in a manner that is fair, impartial, transparent, prompt, and respectful to the participants. But our role is not confined to deciding cases, and over the years we've been given additional duties as well. We now play a role in addressing the problems that underlie those disputes and in helping to alleviate their human impact. So whether it's supervising defendants on probation so they stay off of drugs, or providing support to children whose parents are going through a divorce, or implementing the Ignition Interlock Program, 
The judiciary is asked to do much beside, beyond simply deciding cases. There's a common thread running through these broadened expectations, and I think it can be summed up simply as follows. Our citizens want to be treated fairly, and they want a justice system that works and is effective in delivering justice. Since I became Chief Justice last year, I visited the courts across the state to meet with our judges, staff, attorneys, and the public to find out about how we're doing and meeting those expectations. I've encountered great excitement about the work we're doing and many good ideas to pursue in the future. Our staff and judges are dedicated to our mission and passionate about advancing the cause of justice in our community. And I'm very grateful for their professionalism, loyalty, and commitment. Nevertheless, there are substantial challenges facing the judiciary. These have been difficult economic times for all of Hawaii, and the judiciary has been no exception. In the last two uh, fiscal years, our general fund appropriation was reduced by $19.7 million, or more than 13%. Well, demand for our services has continued to increase. And in fact, the lights are going out in the state building. <laughs> <laughs> we look for no, we miss no opportunities to save funds in the state of Hawaii. That's a 13, so that's about a 13% reduction. At the same time that our resources have been reduced to uh, fund, uh, reductions to our funding, the demand for our services uh, has continued to increase. For example, in fiscal year 2010, over 8,000 misdemeanor impaired driving charges were filed in our district courts, which was a 26% increase over the prior fiscal year. Two-day per month furloughs of judiciary employees, which were instituted in November of 2009, eliminated a total of about 600,000 available staff hours of work. And those reductions in our resources have had substantial negative effects throughout the system. They've reduced, delayed, and in some cases, eliminated important services. For example, the number of pending civil cases in our district courts increased by almost 100% from fiscal year 2008 through 2010. So the pending case load went up by about 100%. The median age of pending civil cases in our circuit court increased by about 40% over the last two fiscal years. And by prolonging the time it takes to resolve these civil disputes, the cost and uncertainty of litigation increases our community's efforts at economic recovery are hindered. The criminal justice system has also been adversely impacted. There were 24 adult probation pro uh, positions eliminated in the First Circuit, including positions in high-risk areas such as the sex offender unit and the domestic violence unit. And this has left individual probation officers supervising as many as 180 defendants, as opposed to the recommended national standard of not more than 120 defendants per officer. By stretching our probation officers too thin, we compromise their ability to protect the public and help probationers gain control over the problems, such as alcohol or drug abuse, that landed them in trouble with the law. Having defendants successfully complete probation saves money for taxpayers in the long run, since the average cost of supervising a probationer is less than $2 a day, while the cost of incarcerating an inmate is about $137 a day. It also helps to reduce the social and economic impacts associated with incarcerating Hawaii inmates on the mainland. The good news from this year's legislative session is that we received funding to end furloughs effective July 1st, and our last furlough day uh, will be this Friday, and we're very grateful for that and grateful for the support of the legislature. And I know Senator Green is here tonight, and I believe Senator Chun Oakland, and we very much appreciate the support we received. But the difficult economic times have continued for our state, and in, although we have money to end the furloughs, our operating budget is reduced, was reduced by another $2 million. So we're gonna to have to continue to look for savings in our day-to-day -day operations. So across the judiciary, there's a real premium on and commitment to finding more efficient and effective ways to serve the public. And one area where we recognize the need to find more effective solutions is in impaired driving. Impaired driving continues to be a significant problem in our community and affects the lives of countless Hawaii citizens every year. In 2009, the last year for which there are official statistics available, Hawaii had 52 alcohol-related fatalities, which is about 48% of the state's total number of highway fatalities for that year. Just last week, 95 of our judges, our full-time and part-time or per diem judges, attended a day-long training session that focused on initiatives that have proven effective in preventing offenders from drinking and driving. One such program involves ignition interlock 
devices, which I think as most of you know, prevent a vehicle from being started if the driver's blood alcohol concentration is above a certain level. Hawaii's ignition interlock law became effective on January 1st of this year and is administered by our Administrative Driver's License Revocation Office, or ADLRO. The law requires offenders who want to continue driving their vehicles to use interlock devices which prevent them from drinking and driving during the pendency of their case and during the revocation period thereafter. ADLRO has already granted more than 300 ignition interlock permits so far this year since the law went into effect. In addition, ADLRO has supported bills before the legislature that would expand the interlock program from first-time offenders to include repeat offenders. And although those bills were not enacted during this year's legislative session, ADLRO will continue to work with the legislators and other concerned parties on this issue in the years ahead. Another initiative that is gaining widespread support nationally is the use of DUI courts or sobriety courts. In other states, DUI courts have been successful in reducing the number of repeat offenses and in reducing the costs of intoxicated driving to the public. Here in Hawaii, the judiciary is working with the State Department of Transportation and the John A. Burns School of Medicine to develop a DUI court under the leadership of Judge William Cardwell. Our DUI court proposal would be a post-conviction model which would require offenders to plead guilty and to be sentenced to the maximum sentence allowed by law. The offenders would also have to participate in treatment and testing and agree to remain sober. And then upon a successful completion of the program, the offender's sentence could be reconsidered and reduced. We know from experience that this type of specialty court can make us more effective in changing offenders' behavior. Our drug court, which combines intensive treatment and supervision with a team-based approach, has achieved very low recidivism rates among program graduates. And moreover, our HOPE probation program, which is based on the simple premise of holding probationers immediately accountable when they use drugs or fail to report to their probation officers has achieved remarkable results. Positive drug tests have been reduced by 83% among HOPE uh, participants in HOPE probation and recidivism has been cut in half. Hawaii has received national recognition for the HOPE program and other states have begun to adopt variations of that program. We're increasing the number of defendants in the program here on Oahu and, it's ex and expanding its use on the neighbor islands. Just recently expanded it um, to the Hilo side of the Big Island and over to Kauai. It already was in place on Maui. The combination of hope, probation, and drug court offers effective alternatives to incarceration at a fraction of the cost. Also, our other specialty court programs, such as mental health court, Girls Court and Juvenile Drug Court continue to make us more effective in addressing the needs of those specialized populations. We hope that a DUI court can achieve similar results by changing the behavior of those who drive while intoxicated. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the contributions of ADLRO, the hard work of Marie Laderta, the chief adjudicator of that office, and the other staff members of the office we have Mike Shambrella, I think, and Susan Weber here with us tonight. They're all right here uh, together. And uh, the folks here work very, very hard and are very dedicated to the mission of that office, which is about to celebrate its 20th birthday, I guess, or 20th anniversary. It was established in 1991 and given the mission of revoking administratively the driver's licenses of impaired drivers in a swift and sure manner. It has a heavy caseload. It's adjudicated or initiated 2,800 new cases already this calendar year. And with an increasing caseload and increasing workload due to the new ignition interlock law, ADLRO has felt the effects of the two-day uh, per month furloughs that I mentioned earlier. But it's still uh, had significant achievements. This year, the office is reallocating resources to increase staffing. It's partnering with the State Department of Transportation to attain federal grant funding for ignition interlock uh, initiatives. I'm very grateful for their efforts and for the dedication of everyone in the office to finding more effective ways to address impaired driving. So to come back to the theme that I began with, the role of the judiciary has evolved substantially over the years, from simply deciding cases to helping, in many instances, to address the underlying problems and to alleviate the impacts of those problems. 
We've embraced that broader role, and we believe that we've done it well. But we need the resources to ensure that we live up to the public's high expectations for us. We know that there are many competing demands for our state's scarce resources, and that we need to ensure that the resources we do have are being used in the most effective and efficient way possible. That's exactly what we've tried to do through initiatives such as Hope Probation, and we'll continue looking for more such initiatives in the area of impaired driving. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for your time, and I'd like to thank Mad Hawaii for inviting me here this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you for that message, Mr. Chief Justice. Uh, I am now going to introduce Jennifer Dotson, our Executive Director. I have to say a word or two about Jennifer. Um, this organization, suffers from the same financial problems as every other nonprofit in the state. And in fact, uh, uh, the, the uh, judiciary, which is nonprofit also, I assume. <laughs> uh, and somehow, Jennifer has, through, through working 16-hour days, through having a very understanding husband and a very well-behaved two-year-old daughter, uh, has been able to hold our operation together and even make it grow, extending our work to, uh, to the neighbor islands in a way that we have wanted to do for years and have never been able to do. She has brought about tremendous change in our operation. She has, uh, I, I, I'm not gonna list her accomplishments, but she's just an incredibly valuable person to Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and by extension, to the safety, health, and safety and life of every everybody out there on the road. So um, I'd like to introduce Jennifer on that. I did want to thank again my husband, Justin, back there. He, he has coined the term volantel. Now, we use that in our home. I'm not a volunteer, I'm a volantel. And our um, daughter outside, Jade, she is um, two years old. So two weeks after I gave birth to Jade, I actually took over as executive director of this amazing organization. And it has been an exciting, exciting time for us. And what an exciting year. We are here to celebrate. We're here to celebrate MAD 27th anniversary. Isn't that amazing, folks? 27 years. So, thank you, Carol McAmey, for starting MAD here. I also wanted to acknowledge um, our team here and Mad Hawaii, we are a small team, but it's been a team effort all the way through. So I wanted everyone to please join me in recognizing Ashley Drake. She has flown in from the Big Island. So Ashley, come on, take a good look at her. She runs our Big Island office, and so she flew here from Hilo, and um, she runs everything um, with our operations there. She's a one-woman operation, but she really has helped us in the area of the victim advocate. So thank you, Ashley. So um, also, um, we have a very special guest here visiting from our MAD national office. We have our field relations director. So Kevin Watkins, please have a stand. Um, Kevin oversees eight different states, including Hawaii. And so Kevin, thank you for your leadership and your support. Um, so Kevin is here celebrating our 27th anniversary. Like I said, what an exciting year. We actually started our fiscal year with a brand new CEO. And with that new leadership, lots of great, amazing energy and momentum. But here in Hawaii, let me tell you about some of the great things that we accomplished. New council members, 24% of our council is now made up of new folks, bringing new energy to us, and I really thank you. So um, for our new council members, can you please stand? Caroline, John Strandberg, um, Adrian Taylor, if you could stand. Our new council members, thank you for joining us. And maybe you might have heard about this new fundraising event that we had last year, and it was October, and we raised $126,000 in one evening for something called the Mad Cab Affair, something that no one else has ever done in the national organization. We had an event that served alcohol, but included in the price of your ticket, your very own personal designated driver. 
And how did we do it? We had it at a very secret speakeasy location. It was exciting and it was amazing and we're gonna do it again. So join us for October 1st, our second annual Mad Cab Affair. We also had a new law. Chief Justice, you alluded to it, and you probably have heard about it because it's our new ignition interlock law. So I wanted to thank our partners at ADLRO, but also our statewide vendors, Smart Start, for helping us with that and making our roads safer here. And we have over 300 installations now, over 400 now as of the traffic commanders meeting, so over 400 safer drivers on our roads. And for anybody and everybody in Hawaii, this is an amazing feat, so thank you. And um, behind me here, you'll see something, a refreshed logo, something that happened only two months ago. So take a look at it, MAD, the new MAD, the new logo, and it's the new MAD. But something we have to tell you is that we might be new and doing a lot of new things here in Hawaii, but we've also not changed a lot of things about what we do. Our mission is the same. Our mission to stop drunk driving is the same. Our mission to support victims of this violent crime is the same. And our mission to prevent underage drinking is the same. And that will never, never stop and never cease. And really, it's been with all of your help here today in this room. I look around and I'm just, so thankful and grateful to all of your help for helping us with that mission over the past 27 years, over the past year when we've accomplished so much in the face of so many challenges. Really, it's you that I have to thank. So thank you for helping us have an exciting year, but thank you also for helping us stay the course and staying with our mission, never wavering. So thank you, and again, let's celebrate. So with that, Let's give a round of applause again to each other. So give yourself a hand. Thank you. And continuing on with our program and the theme of new, I wanted to bring up here Adrienne Taylor. She is going to tell you a little bit about our Young Business Council, something that we've started new this year, but it's helping us with our same mission. So Adrienne, if you could come up, and I think she's uh, gesturing over to John Strandberg, if you would come up as well. <laughs> So these two dynamic duo will tell you a little bit more. the brainchild of a couple of conversations that were going on between Jennifer, John, John and I over lunch. The basic idea is we have a great council, but we need more people who are just as energetic as the council is now to carry it on into the future. So basically what we're looking for, if anybody is interested, are young emerging business leaders um, people who are willing to have conversations with their peers, conversations with their children, with their families, about making responsible decisions about drinking and driving. That is our number one goal. Um, now the youth as aspect to that, it's not necessarily how you are physically, it's more about how you are up top. If you have a lot of energy and you wanna lend your, your, your energy to our organization, and you, you're all here for the same cause that we are, we're just trying to uh, give it a new feel and, and get, get this movement going. Um, so we're gonna be having a lunch on July 7th at PF Chang's. So if anybody's interested, please come see one of us and we'll get you on the invite. No, you got it covered. Okay, and this is I'm John. I'm just here to support her. So I'm all over there. <laughs> this is my advisor <laughs> to keep me in line. Probation <laughs> officer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bodyguard, bouncer, whatever you need to do. But thank you very much, and I hope to see some of you guys on July 7th. And I'm excited to call Carol McNamee up here because we have the really fun stuff to do now. We're going to be giving out our certificates of recognition. So, Carol McNamee, join me up here. Is she on the phone again, folks? <laughs> Carol. Channel 2 News is here now. <laughs> so, um, certificates of recognition. Do you want me to go first or do you okay. want to go first? No, no, these are all yours. I'll just, oh I'll just hand, yeah. No, really? Okay, well, wow. Well, we, hold on, folks. We need to conference. <laughs> and you like to start on that side or on this side? I'll oh, start way over here. Okay, so we're going to call up to the front of the room folks that have helped support us, not only financially, but with their support 
has made it an exciting year for us, right? So why don't we start off um, certificates actually, of recognition? Actually, I'm going to change. Okay, she's changing. She's changing it in the middle uh -huh. of the ceremony. Yeah. With us. So Carol, you're going to explain our first certificate. Go ahead. Um, well, this makes me almost sad. It's, it's a good She's news. It's a good news, bad news. But um, we would like to honor Abram Garcia. Abram, if you could just come up for a moment. A Abram Garcia is a representative from the Smart Start Ignition Interlock Company, who was the one company selected by the state to offer the the interlock devices to all of the drunk driving offenders in, um, in Hawaii. And he has had to go to every island and set up um, service centers, uh, including Molokai and Lanai, and, and, and he doesn't live here. He lives in Texas. And the reason, and so the good news is that he was able to come and do that, and the, and the bad news is that he is preparing to leave, although he's trained some other people to take his place. But he has been an absolutely amazing person to drop in from the biggest state, you know, Texas, into little tiny Hawaii with all our islands and make this thing work. So thank you so much. Thank you. The funniest thing about Abram was that his first week here, he called me up and he said, excuse me, Jennifer, but what is poke? I see it everywhere. You guys are crazy about poke. But Abram, this is going to be a long, long six months. So <laughs> he now knows it. <laughs> Something you won't eat, he says. All right, so our next, um, our next company that we would like to acknowledge, if we could please have State Farm Insurance come up to the room, and we have Jeremy Dunaway, who is representing State Farm. <laughs> So State Farm, I'm going to have to tell you, they have supported us through the years, through the years, without fail. But this year, you have to take a picture, Carol. Um, this year, the most exciting thing is that State Farm has now become the title sponsor for our very first Walk Like Mad here in Hawaii. And it's going to be taking place on July 9th, Saturday. Very first time we're doing this in Hawaii. And thank you to State Farm for sponsoring us $7,500 for that effort. That is amazing. All right, and then our next person. Ooh, we'd like um, we'd like Serco Automotive to please come up to the room, represented by Kim Randall. So Kim, really, this is amazing. So thank you, Kim. Um, with Kim's help and Serco Automotive's help, we for the first time this year were very excited to have our law enforcement recognition event take place on every single island, on er in every single county, and what. Traditionally has happened is that we've had one law enforcement recognition event here in Honolulu and we fly everybody here. Well, the guy said, you know, I want to get my award in front of my guys in my island. And we did it, but it took us one year to find the right partner and it was Servco and Toyota Hawaii. And because of it, we had the most amazing events Kauai, Maui, Big Island, Honolulu, and we recognized over 150 officers for their efforts in DUI arrests. So thank you, Serco Automotive. Thank you. And now we'd like to call up um, our friends from Island Insurance Company. So we have Mike. Mike is here. Thank you. Mike has been an amazing, um, amazing supporter for us. In fact, when I was just a volunteer um, at MAD, my first time attending the MAD annual meeting, Mike, you actually received an award and, and gave a speech at there. So I was, yeah, I was actually it's scary there. about giving a speech. <laughs> so thank you, Mike. We really appreciate all your support over the years. It's been amazing. Thank you. And then we also have another wonderful supporter and a partner for MAD's mission here in Hawaii. 
Can we please have First Insurance Company of Hawaii come up? President and CEO, Alan Ueda. So thank you. <laughs> Over the years, without fail, Alan, you've been amazing. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Please take a picture, Kara. Okay. Why don't you present this one? Do you want to present this one? Oh, I think you should. Okay. Do that one. Well, I'd like to recognize um, the one person who kicked us off with this brand new fundraising event idea, the Mad Cab Affair. The very first purchase that we had, the very first day that sales were available. Can we please thank Dr. Philip McNamee? Yeah. So, <laughs> His Pacific IVF had a premium table at that event, and we hope that we will expect you back at our event again this year. Sure. Should I take the picture or you take the picture? Get oh, the picture. No, you've been, no, no, no. We, we got plenty of pictures together. You better <laughs> thank, you, thank you. Dr. Matheny, you also delight us with so many songs and, and, all, and entertainment in all of our, our, all of our meetings, so thank you. And for excellence, yeah, for excellence, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, you haven't met him yet. Oh, well, you were gonna meet him when we call him up to the front of the room for excellence in reporting. Um, I've talked to him though. Sorry? I've talked to him though. Okay, you've been quoted in the paper by him too, I think. Yeah. Could we please welcome up to the front of the room Mr. Gene Park from Honolulu Star Advertiser. Come on up. You see this byline. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> They're just meeting each other for the first, first time. time. <laughs> Go ahead and take a picture like yeah, you're we've been friends. We move like this. <laughs> for those of you who are tech savvy, you can follow Gene online. On, um, he's a very active Twitter and Facebook um, uh, reporter as well. But in any case, when we were having such a tough time with Ignition Interlock and really getting the word out to the general public about Ignition Interlock, Gene actually installed one in his own personal vehicle and drove around with it and reported on it. So thank you, Gene, for that. And thank you for really, really knocking some stuff off, right? All right. All right, so who's next? Yep, okay. So I wanted to, we, we actually wanted to thank two special people up here tonight. One of them you've already actually seen up here at the room, but we thought we'd just really thank her again. Let me tell you why she's being honored tonight. This woman, dynamic as she is, not only started off as a volunteer um, for MAD when she just moved here from Washington, D.C., in the year that she's volunteered at MAD, she has actually written and raised $13,000 worth of grant foundation money, um, which has really helped us this, this, through the tough economic times. In addition to this, she has organized two mock chill events, non-alcoholic events that have really sort of um, encouraged people to see MAD in a new light. We're fun, we're not those you know, stuffy old people that tell you don't drink and drive. We're actually really fun. In those fun events, we have attracted 76% new donors to our database. And with that, I really wanted to thank Adrian Taylor. Thick and thin. <laughs> Another woman that's being honored tonight through Thick and Thin. She has seen us through the best of times and the worst of times. Um, we have a small office in, at Mad Hawaii, and for those of you who have not visited our office, I encourage you to do so because it, it's 600 square feet of no windows, and there's usually, you know, people kind of like, you know, like jostling for room in there and. Um, one woman who has helped us without fail every week. I've actually calculated how many hours she's spent over the last year in our office helping us with our bookkeeping. 416 hours over the last year. 
in that time with the bookkeeping that she's volunteered to do, she has done two things, money in and money out, right? So she's helped us with $200,000 worth of check deposits, as well as coding invoices, $180,000 worth of invoices she's helped us code over the last year. Please help me in thanking from the bottom of my heart, Ruth Kale. <laughs> Oh, Carol, come back. <laughs> oh, 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 I forgot. Otherwise, Jennifer will make you do it. Thank you. Mary. Our two final certificates. We wanted to thank our um, retiring members. And Arky, you don't get one because we thanked you enough. But Arky, we're going to Oh, okay. All right. All right. Oh, you just volunteered. Watch what you say. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're actually thanking two members tonight that are retiring from our council. And they have really, again, dedicated so much time and effort to our organization. And without them, we don't know where we would be. So if we could please have Dr. Philip Dunn come up to the front of the room. So. <laughs> Thank you for all your help. And then also representing uh, the Maui Police Department, if we could have Commander Bobby Hill please accept on behalf of Officer Nick Krause, another retiring member from our, our, our MAD Operations Council. Bobby. He's actually flying home to Maui tonight and then getting on a plane to Washington. So thank you, Bobby, for all of that. So. Yes, thank you. Um, and then with that, I'm actually going to hand it over back to Carol McNamee because as you all know, um, who have attended the annual meeting before, we save a very, very special, special surprise um, for the end of the celebration. And even I don't know, I'm trying to take a peek who the winner is. I don't even get to know who the winner is, but um, every year it's a super top secret. I'm trying to look who the name is. Um, but she never lets me know. Um, Carol McNamee, could you please tell us who is the recipient of the Carol H. McNamee Award? Yes, oh, well, go. I have a little story, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to prolong the agony and this, uh, yeah. Um, the Carol H. McNamee Volunteer Award was established actually as a total surprise to me. At the time of MAD's, um, MAD Hawaii's 15th anniversary celebration at Washington Place in the spring of 1999, the creators envisioned a perpetual award which would be given in recognition of an outstanding MAD volunteer each year. Now the criterion for the award is the demonstration of unusual dedication and commitment to MAD Hawaii through long-term ser volunteer service, which resulted in significant achievements relating to one or more parts of MAD's mission, to stop drunk drive driving, to support the victims of this violent crime, and to prevent underage drinking. The committee to select the uh, volunteer award is always made up of the past recipients of the, of the award, and there are now 12 of us, um, because that's, the, because our anniversary, our 15th anniversary was 12 years ago. So those recipients, along with me, who are still living in Hawaii, are Leanna Stodd from Maui, Anita DeMauro, who is the organizer tonight, um, she never quits, Teresa Paulette, who also doesn't quit. Gloria Garvey, I don't know if Gloria's here, but she's been a longtime supporter. Sarah Dudgeon, also in the back of the room. Cheryl Langton, who lives on the Big Island. Catherine Nelson, all in the back of the room. <laughs> Elsa Honma, who is not here. And David Taylor, who is also not here. Uh, as I have said on many previous occasions, the choice is never easy. There are always several candidates who will fit the criterion. 
And this time, the choice was focused on the part of MAD's mission, which is not as visible as the other two, supporting the victims of this violent crime. The 2011 recipient is a person who has given an incredible amount of time and expertise to MAD Hawaii over a span of over 20 years. I can't remember a time when this person was not a part of the MAD Hawaii organization, always willing to help, always being a volunteer or a participant in the MAD Dash Fun Run, always serving in a key position on the local board or council. The dedication and unwavering commitment of this year's awardee has been truly extraordinary and has contributed so much to Hawaii's being considered a chapter of excellence in all three parts of its mission. This year's awardee was originally asked to be part of MAD's governing board because of the professional expertise that she possessed, that of a clinical psychologist. Now I know that that statement has already given away the identity of our selected person to many of you. Although our awardee was busy with her own private practice, she always made time for MAD, its meetings, its events and activities, and most importantly, its victims. She has been an advisor, confidant, and counselor to all of our executive directors, our victim staff, services staff, and our volunteer victim services committee chairs on the board or council. And actually, she herself served as the chair of the Victim Services Committee for several years. From the moment our selected nominee joined the MAD organization, she has been willing to counsel individual victims when needed, and certainly she gave the Victim Services staff and volunteer committee members confidence that they were on the right path concerning advising victims themselves and organizing the overall victim program. The professional this professional also served on the committee that produced one of MAD Hawaii's lasting achievements, the MAD Victim Memorial in Kaka'ako Waterfront Park. And if you haven't been there, I encourage you all to go. It's located in the Eva, far Eva end of the park. And this committee met for a period of at least three years, from the early concept and design phase to seeing that the final plaque was installed. More recently, she was a member of the committee which organized MAD's first bereavement seminar. As I mentioned earlier, she has not limited herself to just the victims program of MAD. She has provided support and considered advice to almost all areas of the MAD Hawaii operation, and we have all benefited from her wisdom and quiet commitment. It is my honor to present this year's volunteer award to Dr. Carolyn Stotts. <laughs> now, I know that you all hesitated because you wanted to see Dr. Stotts, and unfortunately, I learned just a couple of weeks ago that she is off island and is not returning for a few more days. So we are going to have to um, create another little get together to give her her award. So here's the deal, guys. Mum is the word. Zip your lip. This because is air the, this this person. I, we don't even have. We should have had a photo of her. I wasn't thinking. Um, it's so secret. Even she didn't. No, she doesn't know, and she's not supposed to know till we actually give her the plaque, which I'm going to show you right now. Of course, you can't see it because it's see-through, but <laughs> it does say to Dr. Carolyn Stotts, with appreciation for your years of exceptional dedication to MAD Hawaii. So this is what she will receive in this secret meeting, <laughs> open only to um, a few knowing people. Uh, but in any event, we are very proud and delighted that Carolyn, after all her service, will take home this award eventually. Thank you, Carol. Um, back to uh, a moment of business. First, I'd like to thank Anita DeMauro, who put this event together, has done it ably for several years. Wonderful job. 
Anita is one of our founding mothers, if I can use that term. Uh, and uh, has been with us a long time. Uh, at this point, uh, I think I see a quorum, and I will, and I will announce the slate to, of the person to replace me as chairman of the uh, Regional Operations Council, the Mothers Against Drunk Driving Hawaii. And uh, I will ask for a, uh, uh, a vote by acclamation in favor of Dee Helber. Dee, are you here? Dee. And I want to thank all of you for coming tonight. This is a bumper group. We're delighted to see so many of you here. And it is because of you and your dedication that you make MAD even more successful. So again, thank you for coming. Thank you, Anita, for putting the program together, Carol, Jennifer, and all the others that pulled together to make this possible. Um, very, just very briefly, for the um, MAD council <laughs> members, our work will begin. We have an 18-month term, which is very different. It's a new way of, of um, moving into a new kind of financial arrangement. So it's a one-year January to December, so we now have kind of this little part of the year in between. So our first meeting will be July 20th for all council members. And uh, this is just a little housekeeping, and it'll be at the MAD conference room at 5.05 p.m. So um, I've asked all of them to bring or to send reports the previous Friday to the meeting so they can all be compiled so we can work on the things that really matter to MAD. Uh, again, thank you for the honor. I look forward to working with everybody this year, and um, I think that... Um, we're going to have a terrific year. Jennifer works very hard. And uh, with all of us working together, I think that it'll be a super year. With that, Carol, I think you wanted to say something. Here we are. We're approaching July 1st and the end of Archie Kale's double duty term. Where is he? Oh, he's hiding. He's hiding behind the Chief Justice, which you can do very well, Archie. <laughs> Um, and in any event, it is time for expressing the Council's appreciation for Arky's tremendous commitment to MAD Hawaii and for his leadership over the past two years. Now, Arky did not exactly inherit a stable ship when he became the captain in um, two th July 2009. At that point, MAD had just moved into smaller quarters. Chaos reigned. It was MAD Hawaii's 25th anniversary year, and we didn't even have an executive director. We had no leadership, staff leadership. Um, <clears throat> after having been on the MAD Council for only a relatively short time, in the scheme of things, Arky, he was a brave soul to have accepted the job, or someone was a very good arm twister, one of the two. But luckily, Jennifer Dotson started as our new executive director only about six weeks later, after Arky was sworn into office. But since that time, Arky has had to deal with a whole series of firsts, adding to the rocky nature of his first year. Um, you've heard about some of these firsts from Jennifer and her snapshot of what's happened this past, um, this past year. But our newly elected chairman, back two years ago, was faced with a major fundraising event, as you've heard about, the Mad Cab Affair, a first for Hawaii and the whole Mad Nation. Um, number two, a visit from the Mad National new CEO, Kimberly Earle, and to add to his worries, the national chairman of the board came along with her to kind of get a glimpse of what this craziness was out here with this Mad Cab Affair and alcohol and all that stuff. <laughs> number three, he um, had to face this new thing called the, the uh, mocktail party, whatever that was going to be, he wasn't sure. Another new friend and fundraising event. Then we had a new law enforcement recognition event, that was number four. Number five, the final push and subsequent um, implementation of the new Ignition Interlock program for Hawaii, and that's been a, excuse me, a real passion of Arkey's. Um, and six, the kickoff of the new underage drinking uh, prevention program called the Power of Parents. Now, and there are probably many, many more things that uh, were new initiatives that I can't think of or can't remember. 
But I must interject here also that ARCHI has given the council members some first to deal with too. We've had to adapt to his iPhone, iPad, <laughs> Google Docs, Google Calendars, and his love of 7.30 a.m. executive committee meetings without breakfast. <laughs> so now, um, how has our esteemed captain withstood all this anxiety and stress that he must have felt with so many new challenges, including the orientation of a new executive director and the constant worry about ending the year with a balanced budget? The answer is physical combat. <laughs> yes. Arky is an early riser. And after a healthy 5 a.m. workout on all the fitness machines, he takes on unsuspecting foes, including our own David Taylor, in long jousts on the paddle tennis courts. He has taken on his opponents with such uh, ferocity over the last two years, just as a stress reducer, mind you, that this is what has become of his weapon, which was pristine, <laughs> only two years ago. Ew, I think it probably reeks of <laughs> dirt and grime and other things we won't talk about. Um, Arky, with thanks for all you have done for Mad Hawaii, the council would like to present you with this little gift to help you out with your future endeavors that might still reduce whatever stress you might come across. And so this is to our great Superman, Archie Kale. Can I open it now? Anybody else have something to say? <laughs> <laughs> the meeting is it is? I'd like you to tell me uh, how this went tonight. Well, I thought this was fantastic. We celebrated our 27th annual year here in the state of Hawaii. We started as an organization, Mothers Against Drunk Driving in 1984. And what a great party. We had all sorts of friends and supporters and donors coming together tonight to really kind of celebrate all the great things that have happened over the past fiscal year. There's been some challenges. It's been up, it's been down, but we really had some great milestones to celebrate, and I'm really proud of that. But really, what a great team effort among everybody involved. Good tone tonight. Everybody was in the right frame of mind, I thought. Absolutely. I think it was a good mix of, you know, being very... Um, serious about the issue of drunk driving and stopping drunk driving as well as supporting the victims of our violent crime of drunk driving and then also preventing underage drinking. But boy, I tell you, we still know how to have fun at MAD. And we laughed and we joked and we handed out <laughs> certificates and we gave hugs and kisses. It was really fun all together. And I think people really need to know that MAD knows how to have a lot of fun. <laughs> Well, Matt was pretty serious to get to Judge Rechtenwald down. That was that was very good. It was a very impressive appearance and speech. What do you think? I, I really am so thankful to Chief Justice Rechtenwald to coming and addressing our group. Like Carol McNamee said, it's only the second time a Chief Justice has addressed the MAD group as a whole. And the previous Chief Justice, it was really just part of a press conference, but tonight, Wow, his remarks were so powerful and really did address some key issues that a lot of people have been wondering about. Justice in jeopardy and how it's affected all of us. But really, even what Chief Justice said about our justice in jeopardy is that there are some shining points to remember about all the challenges that we're facing. We really can work together to address the issues and the common goal that we all have to stop impaired driving in the state of Hawaii.